Pleased to be joined now by the voice of hockey in Toledo. It is Monday, so it's Mondays with Melzack. Matt Melzack, thank you so much for being here. And Matt, we start with the good news. Start with the good news. Pat Nagel, named goaltender, ECHL goaltender of the month, and deservedly so. Yeah, what a November for this guy. I mean, 7-1-1. One, and one. Maybe his goals against, his save percentage, uh, maybe they weren't, uh, you know, like, eye popping at 266 which is still pretty good sure at 917 save percentage which is not like it's not overwhelming right. but you know what you go seven one and one exactly. and nine starts yeah that's pretty impressive uh, i mean frankly it took all the way till what the 23rd of november Correct. we even lost the game this year anyway yeah in regulation time so he's been fantastic he's been everything that we thought he would be uh, when the uh, Grand Rapids Griffin signed him and, and we kind of had the feeling he would be here. And that's the case. He loves going out and playing. He'd play every game. We, we, him. we had a pretty good goaltending tandem last year, last couple of years here in Toledo. But I think with the addition of Nagel and Mohoski, I think, I mean, wow, I don't want to say it's just as good. Maybe it's just as good. They, I, you know what? It is possible. I, and I mean, obviously, I hate to use the most overturned phrase oh, in, use in it. the world, but Do it. time will tell. Oh, that's good. But you know what? It, it, it really is good. As far as on paper, you look at Pat Nagel and what he has done over his career in the ECHL is fantastic. And then uh, Matej Mahovsky uh, coming over from the Czech Republic. I mean, he basically has been playing pro. I mean, you forget that Czech elite league over there is a pretty darn good league. And he's been playing in it and excelled in it. Uh, matter of fact, I'm sure he's probably itching to get back into Grand Rapids. He could probably play in Grand Rapids right now. That's how good he is. And we've seen that already at, with his terrific numbers since he came back off the injury. I know you're ready to give me the, uh, for me to give you the elite Czech Republic uh, hockey stats. Yes. But I don't want to waste your time. All right. So I, I but I do want to say that talked to Dan Watson last week, talked about using that rotation. Yep. Doesn't necessarily mean what, who's hot, who's not. Just using a rotation between the two. Is that the right move here early in the season? I, I think it is. I, I think there's a reason why it's been done a lot. Dan did it last year when Cal Heater and Jake Patterson were both here. And there's a reason why. You got to keep, you got to keep guys in games. I, I mean, you can't. All of a sudden, well, this guy played so well, I got to go back with him. Well, now all of a sudden, you may not play again until the next weekend. Right. So now that other goaltender that you might need very quickly, you never know, you have two contracted goaltenders. You could lose one very quickly to the American Hockey League. You just never know what right. might happen. You got to do the best you can to keep everybody fresh and ready to go. And especially with the schedule the way it is now that we've gotten through that really d tough stretch there in November where you're playing, you know, two or three games a week, you can get into the rotation. Now let's talk about the really good, <laughs> the really good. Uh, on Saturday, we, and even on Friday in Fort Wayne, you saw back-to-back -back nights of flying stuffed animals. What a great weekend, I guess, for the kids. Yeah, it certainly was. It started there Friday. Now, we forced Fort Wayne to go all the way to the third period. <laughs> so a lot of people had to hold on to theirs for quite some time, whereas Toledo on Saturday night was impressive. Over 3,000 uh, new stuffed animals down onto the ice at the Huntington Center, broke the record. Uh, every year we seem to be breaking a record in that, which is unbelievable. Uh, you know, great causes these are gonna go to. I know uh, the Toledo Police, Toledo Fire Department, they were there to, to, to take in some of these. Uh, and you know, Lucas County Children's Service, there's so many great organizations that these benefit. Yeah. And especially at this time of the year, it's a wonderful cause. There's so many uh, children that get these during the course of the, se the year, the seasons, and, and it's, just, it's just terrific to be able to be a part of that. And I think from the walleye side, uh, from BCSN, uh, always a title sponsor, Huntington Bank as well. Just, they love to jump on board with us. It's fantastic. And uh, of course, we look forward to next year too, where hopefully we'll go even higher with yeah. it. Yeah, uh, Matt Melzak is so good at what he does, dropping the sponsors in there without <laughs> even being prompted. Well, that's why he's the voice of hockey in Toledo. There is none better. All right, thank you, Matt, for joining us. Now, uh, speaking of those teddy bears, if you ever wondered what happened to them after they come off of the ice, we go to BCSN's Sarah Sanchez, who has that story. On Saturday at the Toledo Walleye game, 3,160 stuffed animals were thrown onto the ice, and now five different organizations in the Toledo area will benefit from these stuffed animals. With 15.42 left in the second period, Dylan Sadaway scored the first goal of the night, and as soon as the horn went off, the stuffed animals started flying. Scoring that goal, you know, it's something that uh, you always want to you want to do, right? You want to be the guy to score the goal and uh, have the teddy bears come down after you. But you know, I got got lucky there, a little goal, some teamwork from my line mates, and you know what happened. 
when it's a special, especially a night like that, you know what? It's it's huge to have fan support. You know what? Uh, it's for kids in need that can't come out to a game or you know what, just aren't able to make it. So you know what? It's it's a huge, um, huge honor. The teddy bear toss gets the fans and players involved, but it's a cause that's so much bigger than themselves. This year, five organizations will be distributing these stuffed animals out to children in need all around the community. Oh, it's so very special for us. This is our favorite time of the year. We get to give to over 2,000 children that are in the custody or relative care, uh, foster care. We're so happy to be a part of it. We thank um, the walleye hockey team for, for donating this. And just to, to see the kids' faces and the smiles when they receive the bears is just, it's fulfilling. It's it's. It's a wonderful holiday season when we get to, to witness that. And the community in Northwest Ohio has always been so generous when it comes to giving back, especially during the teddy bear toss. This year, breaking a new record. It's, it's amazing. My wife and I have served in lots of different areas around the country and, and to, to be a part of Northwest Ohio and see the, the genuine warmth that people have and concern for, for others is, is very encouraging and to know that um, it will make a difference in the lives of children is, is just very rewarding to be a part of. For BCSN, I'm Sarah Sanchez.